Jane Doe. Looks like she's in her 20s. I'll be your syphagia, right side of him, paresis, and facial droop. Hi, what's your name? Mm, nod your head if you understand. Receptive and expressive aphasia. BP is 150 over 88. Where should we go? Acute check is 73. Straight to radiology. CT brain without contrast, perfusion scan, CT angio, head and neck. Hey, Crow, mm. anybody? Yeah. So you didn't get a name on her? So like, to me, this is exactly what happens when somebody comes into the ER with stroke-like symptoms. Typically, like the EMTs roll them in and then we often will meet them by the door to evaluate them. And usually the paramedics have also done an evaluation even before they've arrived, so we have an idea of what's going on. And most hospitals are set up to expedite the care of stroke patients because it's so important uh, that patients get immediate, timely care as soon as they arrive. I don't know if you've had experience, like experiences similar to this with acute stroke patients or what you've seen. Yeah, no, I think one of the things I was gonna call out about this scene is exactly that, is you know, we're, we're meeting the patient moments within them walking into the emergency department. And I think that is kind of standard of care across all emergency departments that you are seeing that patient as soon as possible and making that initial kind of triage decision on like, do we think this is a stroke up front and sending them immediately over to get some imaging done of their brain. So I thought that was, that was kind of right on here. And yeah, th this looks effectively handled. Yeah, I think that something that I want people to know as far as stroke care, if somebody experiences stroke-like symptoms at home, is that time to get to the hospital, it's, it's urgent. You have a very short amount of time to get there and be treated. So there's an acronym that we use to look for signs of stroke, so be fast. So balance, if somebody's off balance or can't walk. E for eyesight, blurry vision. Uh, if somebody's experiencing that, that's a sign of stroke. F for facial droop, that if somebody's face is drooping. A for arms, so if you have somebody hold out their arms like this, if one arm drifts down, that's a sign of stroke. S for speech, if somebody has slurred speech. And then T is time. You only have a short amount of time to get to the emergency department. T can also be for terrible headache. If you have very severe, uh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Like acute onset, uh, what we call thunderclap headache. That can be a sign of stroke too. Yeah, that, so it sounds like even this scene kind of nicely represents how, what our attitude should be about stroke in the world, right? So, you know, we, we've got Noah Wiley here meeting this patient immediately upon walking into the emergency department to reduce that amount of time to getting an intervention. Exactly. But we could extend that to the pre-hospital time and say the number of minutes you can reduce before you get them to the physician in the ER is just just as important, especially in those early moments of what's happening. It might be helpful to spend a, just a quick minute on why yeah. time yeah. is so important in this setting. What's happening here in a stroke is that we've got blood vessels that are going to your brain and are feeding that tissue, keeping it alive. And what's happening in a stroke is that it's getting blocked off. There are parts of your brain that are not receiving blood flow and therefore not receiving oxygen. And that's what you're starting to see manifest in some of the different parts of the acronym you went through, whether that's the arm drifting, some weakness that you're seeing, um, you know, asymmetry in the face, balance issues. These are all signs that there is damage happening to your brain. And so the sensitivity is we need to open that back up as fast as possible to reduce the overall damage to the brain and give that brain the best chance of being able to recover. So it's one of those situations where really kind of every single minute, it re really, really counts. That's exactly right. And the symptoms that you experience are dependent on what part of the brain is affected. So. That's why we see all of those different variations and symptoms. There are two big categories of ways to treat stroke. One is with medication, like a clot busting medication. And the other is through what's called neurointervention, where a neurologist will actually put a, a catheter up and actually go into the brain and address the clot directly. And so actually in the next scene, they talk through a little bit of that. So let's take a look at that. Robbie, it's Amira. The endo CT came back, no bleed but there is a carotid artery dissection left neck with a thrombocyte through a clot to the left middle cerebral artery. With no intracranial hemorrhage, she might be a TNK candidate. But couldn't TNK cause a brain bleed and kill her? TNK is still the best clot busting possibility. What do you call a Tyrannosaurus under stress? What? Nervous Rex. Dr. King, meet Dr. Matha, one of our esteemed stroke neurologists. How's the patient? 
And so I can't... pause this here. So there's a lot going on. <laughs> so yeah, go ahead. No, no, I, I was just reacting to the joke there. But this is it. It really is starting to do a beautiful job of delineating what our decision tree is in coming in here, and even the framing of this being a really young patient is is what I described a few minutes ago, which is that there's a blood clot in the brain happening, right? We typically think about clots in blood vessels in patients that are much older. They've had more life on them to build up some of those plaques that block the the blood vessels. So you saw the resident here kind of double take and think, ah, I wonder if this is maybe something abnormal happening, maybe not the most classic, you know, type of stroke that that we see. So I was, I, I, Enjoy that and, and uh, enjoy their, their, their kind of open discussion about the different possibilities and how they're working through it. Yeah, definitely. And so she references this clot busting medication called TNK. The most common medication used to be called TPA. People might be more familiar with that term. TNK is very similar and has somewhat supplanted TPA as the medication of choice. And it's a clot busting medication. It breaks up a clot that's causing the stroke. But the risk of it, as she says, is bleeding in the brain. That if somebody gets that medication, it might improve the stroke symptoms by breaking up the clot, but it can also cause bleeding and the bleeding could be catastrophic. So it's a big decision as to whether to give that medication or not. And back to your point about time, the faster that medication is given from the onset of stroke symptoms, the less likely there is to be complications and the better case that the medication is going to work and uh, do what it's supposed to do. Yeah, I think this is one of those, when we think about decisions that we have to make as doctors, uh, we're always thinking about benefits and risks, right? It's a scary decision to make because it's, it's a very high risk decision in both ways, right? Brain damage is potentially, obviously, can be a lifelong disability and can really cause pretty severe problems. But also on the other side, you know, the medication that we're using here is a medication that has risks in itself that can cause bleeding in the brain and in other areas in the body. You know, if, if folks have other places, whether it's in their, their gastrointestinal tract or other places where they may have some vulnerabilities or might have had problems before, you know, where we're setting them up for a difficult situation. So, you know, high risk but very high reward when it is the right decision. And just another beautiful example of a team working well here is this neurologist was clearly paged several minutes ago, probably even maybe while the patient was on the way to the hospital, depending on how they presented. And so the ability for them to be there at the bedside to help make this decision is, is really incredible. And it's, it's, it's cool to see.